Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing a Rating Your One Man Doom Stack, this time covering Drazoath the Ashen. So I reckon of the, the three new Chaos Dwarf Legendary Lords, Drazoath is the obvious choice for a one man Doom Stack. There is so much actually going on with all of his equipment and his traits and all the potential combinations that you can use to make him a one man Doom Stack that I could really spend five minutes just talking about that before the battle. So what we're going to do here is fight the battle first and then talk about all the different combinations that you can do. So let's get into that. Now, before we actually fight the battle and while the game's loading up, I do need to let you guys know that this video here is sponsored by Instant Gaming. I've been with Instant Gaming for ages. Great company to work with. Never had any issues on their website. And what I like to do is try to see what like good deals of games that I highly recommend on this website. So what I'm showcasing today is satisfactory. I've actually live streamed this game before. If you go back to, I think, a November live stream, we did a pretty long live stream of um, Satisfactory. So if you're unsure about this game, you can check out the gameplay on the channel. And uh, if you aren't interested in Satisfactory, well then there's plenty of other games. It's not like this is the only game available. But yeah, just comparing the price, it's in Australian dollars here. So $37.14. And if we have a look on Steam, it's currently $44.95. So you can save a fair few dollars on that one there. But this is a game that I highly recommend if you're interested in these kind of games. Obviously, if you want to see a lot of action, this isn't for you. But you know... Browse around, see what you can find. There's loads of great deals, including Total War DLCs. They do have the uh, Chaos Dwarf DLC on there as well. It's pretty much the same price you'll find it in, on other websites. Okay, now the uh, the battle itself here. All right, yeah, on another note, big thanks to um, Instant Gaming for uh, supporting the channel for so long. And also, I've gotten so many good deals off Instant Gaming. Main thing there is just purchase on a website that you feel comfortable with. And just be a smart shopper. There's really no reason to pay full price for, for most of these games. Okay. So we're unbreakable thanks to the standard of Zar, so we can stay up in the air as long as we want. But I reckon our overall stats are so high that we can just jump straight into combat here. Actually, I'm going to go straight after the Garrett, the Gracier here. Because that dude on his bell is going to get super annoying real quick. So looking at the stats of Drazoath while the fight's going on here... 105 melee attack, 124 melee defense, 13,431 health, with 930 barrier. If we have a look at his resistances, yeah, that's going to get annoying real quick. Let's pop that down. If we look at his resistances, he's at 40% physical resistance. It's actually going up because of blaze and body, so it's going to potentially go up to 50%, and his ward save is at 45%. So we are a little bit vulnerable to magical attacks, but luckily they don't really have too much magical attacks in this army here, in all four of these armies. This is a Skaven endgame crisis here. But if we were going up against something that had a lot of um, magical attacks, the Chaos Dwarves have an item that they can equip, called, I think, the Obsidian Amulet, that strips, basically turns them into a Lamasu, and just strips a small area around them of magical attacks. We don't really need to worry too much about magical missiles, because if we have a look back here again, any magical missiles that are shot at us has to bypass the missile resistance first, so magical missiles would actually be 100%, well, 90% block, because that's the cap there. So we're actually almost at our physical resistance cap here. He just needs to be in melee a little bit longer. But of course, that will only apply when he's actually in melee, which is the only time it really matters anyway. So he's taking a little bit of damage here. But we've got regen through the... Um, uh, that item that you get from Drakenhof. It's just... Um, just forgotten what it is at this moment. The Crown of Skulls or something. And that's also giving 15% ward save. So yeah, one thing that we can do here is pull out of combat, recharge our barrier, and then get back into combat. One thing that we can do. Also, I think that this battle would actually be a lot easier if I was on foot, because the rattling guns and missile units wouldn't shoot at us at all, and we'd be a much smaller target. Sure, we'd have lower health than if we were on Cinder Breath, but the enemy just wouldn't be able to hit us. So I think whether or not to be on his mount really depends on what enemy we're going on. I think we've chosen poorly in this regard here, which is actually a decent test. So just get that barrier back up and then throw back in here. K 
can be a bit of a derpy mount sometimes. We've got heaps of Winds of Magic, which a lot of people were curious about in the last uh, video about the Chaos Dwarfs. Yeah, how are you getting so much Winds of Magic reserves? Well, if you've just played a single campaign of the Chaos Dwarves, you'd understand. <laughs> but just in case you, you haven't, the Chaos Dwarves have a building that they can build in every single one of their tower settlements. It's a tier 5 building called the um, Temple of Hashud. And it gives a global bonus to Winds of Magic reserves plus 3. It's basically knowledgeable. So yeah, if you've got 10 of these buildings, you know, that's plus 30 Winds of Magic. If you have 100 of them, plus 300 extra Winds of Magic. And this guy here hasn't conquered the entire map, so he doesn't have that much. So I think, yeah, he has 243 here. And this spell only costs 5 Winds of Magic, so yeah, we'll be able to cast this a lot. So that bell is being really annoying. almost killed him. Just a little tidbit about that uh, bell is that it only goes off while a spell cast is active which is why you can't hear anything now but next time it casts a spell it'll start ringing again. Now if we overcast this right underneath it it should kill it. It's really good against large units. Didn't quite kill it. There it goes again. Now, I usually don't like overcasting these spells just because the cooldown is significantly higher than if you just regular cast it. But I was hoping to try to one shot him, it just wasn't enough. I probably could have done the. Um, the Ash Storm as well. I just know that that bell's really annoying. Okay, I think he's dead now. So you can see here, everything's going alright. The uh, Rattling Guns aren't shooting at the moment. Good opportunity actually to blow them up with this. Since they're unlikely to try to come into melee with us. And even with 90% missile resistance, these units here can still do significant damage to us. Yeah, see the cooldown is much better when you don't overcast it. Good, help hit Abomination down. Could do that, I just don't think we need to. Because, yeah, we've got his special amulet on, so we've got the, um... Uh, where is it? Where is it? It's in here somewhere, I think. The extra, um... Wait, don't we have it active? The one that gives us extra... Uh, spell intensity? I don't think we got it on. That's okay, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I could have sworn we had the... I don't know, I must be mistaking it for something else. Good, just storing. Yeah, melee infantry is just no problem for Drazzle the Ashen. So he's good against large units and against huge swaths of infantry with the Flames of Asgore. Okay, now the Doom Wheel only has magical missile attack, not magical melee, so it's fine to fight it in melee. And when it shoots us, the missile resistance kicks in anyway. So it's not an issue. How many more forces do we have left to go? Yeah, still got heaps. Okay, it looks like the stage is coming here at that um, 
there's going to be a lot of missile units on the field, not too many melee units. So what might happen soon is they're going to all start shooting at us once we're less obstructed by these other creatures. Could use our army ability here, but I prefer to just use Drazawath. I did use this one here, this is just a melee defense buff. He's maintaining full health pretty much. Sometimes the Bale Taurus unit can get a little bit derpy in terms of its animation. But overall I think it's it's fairly good. Definitely not the best, but also far from the worst. Still got 155 reserves left. Yeah, we're not running out anytime soon. So I really could use the other spells as well. I mean, that's only 9 wins of magic. Just helps speed up the battle a little bit. Uh, 2,300 kills. Now, I believe the way that we were um, rating these one-man doom stacks was no longer just doing it like 10 out of 10, whatever, but rating it based on who the previous strongest one-man doom stack was, and that is um, Miao Ying. It was Mal's Dark Blade for a long time, but uh, Miao Ying I think is better, and I suppose Xiao Ming might even be better, but basically the same thing. So that's who we'll be comparing this one to. Yeah, that's how we get rid of the rattling guns shooting at us. Single entities easily killed in melee. And even anti-large infantry here just not really doing any serious damage to us. We'd easily be at our physical resistance cap now. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, maxed out. Good. I definitely think that the Flames of Asgore is a better spell than the uh, the Hellhammer, although it's very similar in terms of quality. God, this is bloody crazy how powerful Drazawath is. The thing is, he hasn't really done anything specifically to cheese the magic. This is just what you can get as... ...as the Chaos Dwarfs. Just as you play the campaign. Still a lot of enemies still to come in. Kind of wish they'd all come at me at once. Not in waves, because... 
I could get more kills with each one of these casts. Dude, 3,000 kills. <laughs> Okay, it's not good when we're not in melee with anyone, because we lose our physical resistance. And that's a lot of missile units around here now. And even with this resistance, they could shoot us down. Like, not quickly, but they could do it. So yeah, it is going down a little bit. Alright, they might stop shooting at us if we get into melee with these rat ogres here. Yeah. This is why it might have been better to be on foot, so those bloody rattling guns wouldn't shoot at us at all. We'd lose a lot of weapon strength, but we'd gain resistance. Also, the AI is just really bad at handling small one-man doom stacks. They're absolutely terrible at it. They just don't know what to do. Yeah, see, no one wants to engage with me now. I'll just keep running back. Actually, I think that was a bad choice. Good for the rattling guns. They're the ones doing all the damage to us, not the uh, the globe it is. They're not really hurting us. Still haven't hit our regen cap. Yeah, we're taking a little bit more damage at this part of the battle here, because this is the tougher part dealing with their um, missile units. Okay, I've got an idea of how to defeat them a little bit easier, but I need to get out of combat here. Because what we want to do is put them all in one spot so that with just with one cast I can kill them all. And the way to do that is just run away from them, just a little bit. And you'll notice that as they chase us, they'll get closer and closer together and when they're close enough then we just go and charge right back at them and uh, cast the flames of Asgore on them also the battle is on very hard battle difficulty but the campaign obviously isn't since there's a bounce of power bar there okay, got our barrier back that's good Go around them a little bit. Okay, looks like all of their reinforcements have now come onto the battlefield. Which means we should be really close to the army losses. I probably just need one or two more flames of Asgore. See, there's a bit of a blob forming up there. Just want to get rid of them all in one cast, if possible. Alright, let's get in there. We've also got this ability here, but we really shouldn't do that when they've got so many missile units potentially shooting at us. Alright, good. At least there's a lot more other monsters around here that can crowd around us and kind of act as a barrier to their bloody missile units, which are kind of wrecking us a bit. There, that's what I wanted to see. Because, yeah, the AI doesn't even try to dodge the Flames of Asgore. And there's the army losses. Alright, we've taken a little bit of damage, so let's try to regenerate it by just staying in melee a little bit longer. If we can potentially end this battle here at full health, that'd be good. The way we do that is with Ash Storm, slow them down as much as possible. 
And yeah, we got 3,000, almost 500 kills. Actually, we might be able to get that. 500 kills just by popping this down a few times. Yeah, stay on the ground. And speed this up. Good year for generating pretty quickly. But yeah, I definitely feel as though we would have been better off on foot in this battle. Rather than on Cinderbreath. It depends on the enemy. If it's all just melee troops, I think it's totally fine to be on Cinderbreath. But this one had so many missile units. And they were by far the most dangerous units. I mean, you saw what they were doing to us. Their melee units couldn't even scratch us. And even then, I don't know if we're going to end this battle at full health. Although something's going on over there. Seems to be derping out a little bit. Oh, we're so close to max health. Just a little bit more. I don't think we're going to make it. Oh, well, that'll, that'll have to do. He's only lost 100 health there. Yeah, so crazy bloody strong. And I think we really did choose the wrong mount for this battle. He should have been on foot. But the fact that he was able to deal with this kind of stuff on his mount and walk out pretty much unscathed, very good one-man doomstack, especially considering no Sword of Cain, which a lot of people do hate the, the Sword of Cain doomstacks, which I understand. The thing is, I think with the Chaos Dwarves, you shouldn't pick up the Sword of Cain under any circumstance because... Your campaign mechanics kind of rely on you to have higher public order because the lower your public order goes, even if it's not causing a revolt, you're going to lose so much labor. Like you lose 20% labor if you're in that that um, bottom tier of um, of uh, public order. Like if we go and have a quick check, no, I'm not gonna see it there. Yeah, if you go and have a look here, if if he was in this area, what campaign difficulty is this on anyway? It's on very hard campaign difficulty, so that's only a minus four penalty, but he's managed to maintain it at really high public order here. But yeah, if you had the, um, the Sword of Cain at maximum, instead of having a minus three labor per turn, you know, minimum of five labor lost, you could end up over here, if you're especially on legendary difficulty, or even here, causing you know between 10 and 15 percent, just requires you to replace a lot of your labor. And we clearly didn't need the sword of Cain here anyway. I can totally understand why you would want to get it to make you as strong as possible, one man doomstack, but it just there's a point to which you just don't need it. It was at his maximum resistance for most of the battle anyway. It only would have been helpful against something that was like loads and loads of really powerful single entity magical attackers. And even then, we could just switch his items. Now, if we have a look at um, the items that he does have, he's got the Armor of Destiny, uh, which you could also use the Mirror Shield, because the barrier hit points that you get are augmented by your hit point um, augmentation. So, for example, if you've got Throth the Unclean's defeat trait, which he does have, then you'd get an extra 10% barrier hit points, which is why he's got... Uh, he did have 930 barrier hit points, because he has Ashen, which gives you 600, and I think he has a total of like 35% extra... Uh, hit points, uh, which is why his hit points are so high, but also why his barrier was high as well. So you could use that for more barrier, but then you lose ward save and physical resistance. The ever-changing blade, I don't think there really is a great choice for a weapon when it comes to the Chaos Dwarves. Nothing that's going to pro provide uh, any physical resistance or ward save. So the only weapon that could do that is the Sword of Cain, and I don't recommend picking that up. The Hellshard Amulet, which you could have used the Talisman of Preservation instead. The Talisman of Preservation would give you 16% ward save where this one here provides you with 15 because you've got five base and then you've got while you're in melee an extra 10 percent but then you've also got melee damage reflection on top of that winds of magic power um capacity increased um on top of that so that's providing a, a little bit of extra value but i don't i think that it, they're interchangeably about the same quality 
Then you've got the enchanted item, the Gauntlet of Bezarek the Cruel. I think this is the go-to enchanted item for a one-man doom stack. Hit points plus five percent, physical resistance plus ten percent, expert charge defense. I don't think you're going to find any other enchanted items that are going to be anywhere near that good. But if we just go and have a look at potentially what's available, so there's a talisman there. So this one here, so that talisman can give you extra hit points, but I think that the ward save is more important. So Talisman of Preservation, yeah, 16% there. You've got loads of items, which is what will happen with the Chaos Dwarf campaign quite easily. So you've got the Focal Lens here. No, that's not going to help. And this one here. Okay, this one will actually provide you with 10% physical resistance. This is an enchanted item. And melee defense for the army. Right. That actually might be slightly better. But this one here does provide hit points, which I think is a little bit better than a little bit of extra melee defense. But those are essentially interchangeable, about the same quality. And then as for arcane items, you definitely want to go with the Crown of Skulls for ward save 15% and passability of the hunger. Now, he doesn't seem to have the banner, the um, the Oath of Contempt, which can give you extra 10% physical resistance because we didn't really need the Unbreakable trait. And you can get that by defeating Gotrek if you can find him. Yeah, but you don't need this, I'd say. But um, considering we're at our max physical resistance anyway, then this was fine as well. So there's loads of different items that you can use for that. Um, there was one other one that I wanted to look up. I think it's a talisman. If you were going up against... Yeah, talisman of obsidian. If you're going up against something that's got loads of magical attack and you've got lots of physical resistance but not much ward save, having this one instead of the Hellshard amulet might be useful because of the... Uh, negates magical weapons within the effect area. So making sure that everyone that's fighting you in melee is always using physical attacks. That's something that you can do. And that would be better if you had the uh, the other banner, the banner of uh, Contempt instead. So that's that's an option, but we didn't need it for that battle since there wasn't that much of a magical weapon concern. If we have a look at the defeat traits that he's gotten, he essentially got all the ones that were really important. So we got the Great Green Killer, Physical Resistance. He got the Trifecta for the, um, for the Physical Resistance one. Great Green Killer... Um, Pride Assassin, that's Sigvold, and and Archeon there for physical resistance. You got the Wade Through Gore there, 20% um, extra hit points, and you got Deep Cleaner, hit points plus 10%, Wanderer No More, and Sora Smiter for extra melee defense, and everything else apart from that just provides small bonuses here and there. But he got all the really good defeat traits, and a couple of traits that he really didn't need. So, for example, um, Bell of the Ball, Weapon Strength plus 5%, is not that important. Hide Striker, not that important. Uh, Tyrion owes me, not that important. Skull Slasher for 15% Missile Resistance is fine, but not super important. Um, same thing with defeating Scarbrand. So, a couple of, couple of unimportant traits. Oh, the Villager's Defeat trait is quite good for extra melee defense as well, but not as good as Source Miter and um, Wanderer no more. Now, in terms of rating this, it would have normally gotten like a 10 out of 10 rating, but in terms of comparing it to Miao Ying, I think he's worth 0 0.9 Miao Yings, right? I think Miao Ying is better because she has the ability to not only have two pools of, of uh, health regen, but she can at will go between a small entity and transform into a big entity if it needs to. Uh, whereas you really have to decide before the battle begins whether or not you want to be on on Cinderbreath or not with this. And I think that Miao Ying was able to get full 90% ward save. That being said, I'm not entirely... I can't remember exactly, but I, I think that she may have had... No, I don't think she did have the Sword of Cain, did she? Because she had... Um, she's got banners and stuff that gives her loads of uh, ward save. So yeah, I think that Miao Ying is still a better one-man doomstack than Drazawath, but Drazawath is still bloody amazing. He's probably a better spell... Well, he's definitely a better spell caster than Miao Ying, because I think in that battle with Miao Ying, we probably ran out of magic uh, using the... Um, I, I can't remember what the spell's called, the, the Area of Effect one. Um, whereas we didn't even come close to running out of magic with Drazawath. So it really just depends on what you're going up against, but I still think that Miao Ying is more powerful. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Don't forget to check out Instant Gaming if you haven't already, just to get yourself some good deals if there's any games out there that you've been eyeing but maybe a bit too expensive. Uh, there's been better, like, bigger deals than what I showed you with Satisfactory. I've seen up to 90% off. It's entirely up to you if you want to go for it. Um, appreciate this one being sent in. I think he did about as good a job as he possibly could have done. I really appreciate not having the sort of cane because I don't think that would have been a good one-man doomstack situation. Anyway, it's in this one. Appreciate you guys, and we'll see you next time. Later, guys.